the question says we write an assembly language program that does this. Yeah, it, it does a whole bunch of things here. Um, prompt for an input school, uh, an input score from from well, for test for ICT 11, 11, 10 test number two. Might as well make this test number three since test number four is coming. And classifies it as either being an A plus, an A, B plus, B, C plus, C, D plus, or a D. Right, I mean, so the, the thing here is just the logic. And where do you start with the logic? You start by identifying exactly where the thresholds are. Where are the thresholds? They're there, you know that, right? Each school at UNSA has its own thresholds. These thresholds were discussed in the first lecture series that we had uh, back in February. Can't remember the day. Um, but we, we sat there in UNSA Sec 2, right? We sang about these different thresholds here. So, this is a starting point, right? For you to implement that logic, you need to know what it is you're gonna be working with. And in our case, we are essentially working through, and where are we now? Oh, wow. Remember this? We had class, we first met, we crossed paths on February 18th, and we had a discussion about this. This is the thresholds we're talking about. So for you to implement that, you need to know this. Question then is how do you incorporate, because what we're dealing with is essentially just conditional branching. So how do you incorporate these thresholds so that you print these different grades? That is the question. Right, so you have this information uh, you go back to your question and you realize that the question is asking for a couple of other things, right? Besides you classifying the grade, you want to interactively get the value from the user or the student, hopefully one of you guys, right? So we, we start with the usual, right? We shall save this uh, grade classification or something. ICT 1110 grading.asm. Save that, right? This is this has become second nature now. Um, right, right. So we must prompt user for input. What else do we do? Well, prompt the user for input. Classify grades. In fact, what you would do, uh, classify A plus, classify A, classify B plus, you know the drill, right? Classify B, classify, what else is there? C plus, classify C, classify D plus, and then classify D. Is my voice still not audible enough or something? I should be speaking on a, on a much higher thing, right? What, 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 did, what did we discuss during sound encoding? What's, what's that? How, how, how do we work on sound? 44,100 is now what I'm speaking on, right? Anyway, so <clears throat> this is what we must do to implement this. Prompting for input from a user is pretty easy, right? We want some descriptive text, one, two, three, four, where we'll say input string or something. And then we'll just say uh, enter your score. This is a string. So what's pro prompting here in line number eight, we say we load into V0, zero. we load into V0, four, because it's a string, we want to print that string enter your score. Now we know the drill here, load address is zero, into var input string, syscall. Like I said last time, when you're writing some, a somewhat complex program, a program that spans multiple lines like this case, you want to test it out every time you 
write a chunk of code. Like in this case, we know enter the score works just fine. What else do we do? We now prompt for the actual integer because this is just a string we are printing. We, how do we prompt for an integer? Um, we use Cisco system call code number five. Yeah. When the user enters the value, we know this will work. We run this. When the user enters the value, I enter the value five. We know that this five is going to be put where a zero. So what we must do is we must move it from A0 to a safe place, a safe register. Take your pick, T0 to T, T what? T0 to T7, right? Or register 8 up to 15, register 24, 25. Hey, if you want, use the saved registers, right? Nobody cares. So we're going to push, we will push the value because once the user is prompted for input and they enter the value, that value is going to be in V0. So you want to move it from Z, V0 to, to a safe place. In this case, we've decided we're going to move it to T0 or register number 8. Right? Um, where are we moving it from? From V0. Now, you can test it out here to try and see if the chunk of code in V0 is going to be moved there. You run this thing, enter, well, I guess I got 33 or something. Um, you go to T0, did I enter 33? What did I enter? This is the problem here, what are we doing wrong? Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. The Lord is there with us. Um, yes, they saved us, right? No, but it's not, still. Did I put 33 here? No, I entered, oh yes, I did, thank you. Yeah, sorry for that, confusion, right? Um, debugging, it's always nice to pair program, right? Right, so the, the thing here, right, that in line number 15, something else I wanted to explain about the move here. I had a very interesting chat with people last, uh, the last time we met. I was telling them that when you say move from V0 to V8, V0 v, v, v to register eight, it doesn't mean that you're literally moving, it's like you're copying the value. It's not the actual move you are, you, are, you are used to, where if I say I move this remote control, I move it somewhere else, it won't be here anymore. But in this case, if you check the CPU status, you'll notice that V0 still has 33, 8 has 33. So you're, you're making a copy, essentially. Move copies, right? Just wanted to point it out. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've prompted for this, this string from the user and you know it works just fine, what do we do? We classify. But before we classify, we must, uh, well, I guess classification would define the thresholds themselves. We classify. How do we classify? We must branch. Classification is going to be based on branch. I want to say, if, you, if your, your grade classification falls within the A plus range, we print A plus, right? So you notice that before you even start printing A pluses, you must define labels that are going to be used to hold these values, right? Var A plus. Right? Yes. Sorry? Well, for now, we are simplifying things. We're not really going to calculate the percentage. What, what he's asking is, uh, you, 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 calculating the percentage is as easy as what? Score over total times 100. If we wanted to expand this question um, to deal with, uh, to deal with uh, what do you call this? To deal with percentages, we could do that. In fact, we, we've simplified this question. We are assuming the score that you're entering is a pre-computed percentage. Do you understand where he's coming from with this? His assumption was that the score that you enter here, when you're asked enter the score, usually our tests are out of 50. His assumption was that if the score is out of 50, then there has to be an intermediate step where we compute the percentage. Because in actual fact, these grades are tied to the percentage. It's out of 100, right? You're working with a zero to 100 range. So if we're saying our score is out of like, 
50, if we're assuming this was out of 50, then we'd have to perhaps just multiply by two. Or if it's not out of 50, maybe it's a quiz, it's out of 10, it's a score over the total, which is 10 times 100. So you notice at that point, you're, you're really working with different operations or instructions. Mode, div, right? And in fact, it gets a, a bit murky here because it's possible that your percentage score will, will have like a, a decimal part, right? I mean, seeing as we're dealing with integers, I mean, there could be like a work around here without, you can easily say, you know, you're, you're rounding off to the nearest, is it the nearest number if it's, if the, 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 the remainder is more than five, then you just add a one to the quotient. That can be implemented without a problem, right? This logic. But in this particular, Question, we are assuming the input is out of the 100. You're entering your percentage score, right? Okay, so percentage score, you know, A plus, right? Um, we're gonna have A. I'm just lining this so that, uh, guys, is this making sense? We're gonna have B plus B. We're gonna have C plus C. Yeah. We're gonna have D plus D. Now I'm just copy pasting here so that we don't waste a lot of time. Is this making sense now? Um, so we have all the labels that we need for us to be able to print out the output so that the user knows whether the score they got corresponds to an A plus or a D, or everything in between, right? Now that we've done this, right, the question is how do we go about classifying these? If we're, if we're using conditional branches for us to classify the different grades here. Question is, what do we do? We just have to identify the appropriate, the appropriate instruction to use for us to branch. But before we do that, we know that branching involves certain key parts, right? The things that you're comparing against each other and the label. There is something that we've deliberately left out from our discussion. Here's a question. B and Q, branch if not equal, what type of instruction is it? We've been following. Deliberately left out, to, because this, this stems out of our discussion of the three categories of instructions. B and Q, what type of instruction is it? Don't know. If you, B and Q, how many, how many instructions does B and Q take? Oh, Christ, whiteboard mark. How many instructions does B and Q take in? If we had a B and Q here, there would have to be a register, right? Let's say it's register eight, register nine, and a label. I mean, how would, how would this, think about the 32 bits you'd be working with. How would you really slot in this? Anyway, I just thought I would, I would, I would point, point out these are things to think about. If you remember what I said, I said that uh, once you assemble this program, right? Once you assemble, once you compile, once you assemble this program, this is going to be an address in memory. Instruction, register, register, immediate value corresponding to the address. Yes. In fact, we haven't, we will, but we haven't got into the stage where, where, um, where we started putting in the logic, classify the different grades here. I was just trying to remind people that this discussion is coming from somewhere, right? We should remember that, you know, there's these different instructions for, 
fall in either one of the three categories, R format, I format, J format. <coughs> and really, if you look at an instruction and look at the different arguments that it takes in, you should be able to know what sort of, what sort of instruction format it is, right? Not J, not R. Uh, okay, so the next step, right, is before we start classifying, we must make sure we have labels. Because what we're going to be doing once we classify all these different, all these different grades is, if we classify it as an A, we need to branch to the part of the code that's going to be executed. In this case, once we classify that it's an A+, plus, we must branch to the part that's going to print out A+. Plus. Branching means you must have the correct logic and the corresponding label. So how do we, how do we classify an, an A+, plus? What is an A plus? It's a number that is between 90 and 100. So how can we do this? Branch if greater than, pseudo instruction. Branch if what greater than? Branch if the input value, in this case is gonna be an eight, right? Is gonna be greater than? We don't know, which is why we must define the value that we're going to compare this against, right? So in this case, Sorry, well, we can just say 89 here. So, so for, for, this particular, for this particular condition, what we're saying is we're gonna compare the input value from the user with 89. If the input value is greater than 89, then it's going to be an A plus, right? Um, so we're saying if the input value which is in register eight, is greater than what is in register nine, which is 89, then we must branch to a label which we're going to give like a, a very intuitive name, label A plus. Right? But because we are saying we are going to branch to label A plus, this label must exist. Whenever you are working with Unconditional branches and conditional branches, whatever you are branching to must exist. It must have the same exact name as what appears against the conditional or un uh, unconditional branch. So whenever you see someone write something like label A plus, there must be a label with the same name. Remember this is user defined, you write this name, you come up with this name, if this was X, there must be an X label. It must be a unique name, an X label somewhere in your code, right? So in this case, because we are saying the label we are going to branch to is going to be called label A plus, we must have a label. Now, for me, uh, I mean, I prefer to have these at the same indentation, lab uh, indentation level here. <clears throat> so label is called label A plus. Question. What do we do in this label? All we do is we are printing a string. Which string are we printing? A plus. So if we're printing a string, we're gonna say we load this into V0, printing a string is four. What string are we printing? A plus. And then we issue his call. Right, at this point, we could probably just do a simple check to see if this is gonna work. We'll load our small little program, run it, and just enter a range within 90 and 100, right? 91, A plus. Right? I mean, if you, want, if you wanted to, you could probably um, uh, run this again, I guess, and then uh, enter score, let's say, one. I don't know who would get 1%, but one. It's something wrong with our code, which is why it's still executing anyway. Do you understand why it's still executing? We didn't exit main, right? Thank you. But we'll fix that uh, at, at, at a later stage. I guess for good measure, we might as well just do it now, I guess. Um, we, we, we brought up the notion of making sure that you exit your program. So if you have multiple labels, because the entry point of your program is always the main label, by definition or by convention, you must make sure that you exit the program 
appropriately, right? Using system call code number 10. So if I run this, uh, if, I, if I load this and run it again, and I enter one, there'll, nothing will be printed. Why? Because we are exiting, we're, we're, we, are, we are checking against whatever is in main, and then uh, once we get to the end point of main, we terminate the program. It's done, right? Okay, so you notice now, right, that if you can do this for A plus, you can do this for A. C plus, D plus, D, D plus, right? Not a problem. Sorry? Same process. For, for you to classify A, what you need to do is specify what you're classifying against. What is the threshold for A? 80 to 89, right? Yeah, so you just say 79. BGT, dollar sign eight, dollar sign nine. Label A. Since it's what? This, this is a thing here. So the reason why order is important when you're doing these, these checks is, is that if you think about it, if you enter a value that doesn't fall within the, if you, if you enter a value that, I, I know the argument here, oh, we want this line between 30 and 32, won't it, uh, it be classified as an A plus? Is that the question? Yeah. It won't. Well, it won't because the first condition will, will, who capture it. This is why order is important, right? You see, this is best understood if you're walking through, from a mental picture, right? So if you want to, let's say, work with 81, once you execute your program, the first thing it will do once, once you get to 24 here, it will come here, 81, right? It will come here, eight will be, 81 will be an eight. You come here, you load 89 into nine. It will be 81. Is 81 greater than 89? It won't. Uh, so so uh, I know it, is, is, it won't, right? So it, will, it won't execute this. It won't branch here. It will come here and check. So this is, this is, why, this is why order, or like following a predefined order is important. Like if you wanted to do it the other way around, you'd be, you'd be checking it against like different conditions. If you wanted to start with the smallest, going to the largest number, guys. And I feel bad that we're almost like we're learning, we're learning these basic programming things when, make no mistake, we're not here to learn how to program, right? Let's not lose focus of why we're doing this. We're just doing this so that we understand what's going on behind the scenes. We're not interested in the programming thing, although it's nice though. Yes? Um, when creating the label, are we supposed to, is it, is it always a plus, are we supposed to write the plus in two? No. In oh. as, as long as, if you've gone through the reference documentation, the book that the MIPS, uh, the, the book, the de facto book we're using for this lecture series, there's a small little part that tells you um, Characters that are allowed when you're coming up with labels, with names with, of variables. As long as it conforms to that, it could be your name. You can give this label your name, it will work. But the thing is, you want to always make sure it's something descriptive, something that is linked to what you're doing at that point in time. Like if you read this label A, you know that it's, I guess it's associated with an A or something. Could, this could have been label grade A or just grade A or something, right? So it's not a must. This is user defined because it's user defined. It's open season. You can name it whatever you want to name. Yes. Here. This. You you have to. If you don't close this, then it will everything that is below that level is going to be executed. So you have to. Yes. So after, in here, what, what, what Kapembo is saying is, in here, what she's implicitly telling us is, we forgot to, to exit gracefully here. 
So dollar sign V0, uh, 10, and then Cisco. This must be done for all the labels that you have. Again, A plus is easy, we branch to A, so we must have a label A, which should have the same content as A plus. So I'll just copy, the, copy paste this because we are running out of time here. The label here is not A plus, it's A. The thing we are printing is not var A plus, it's var A. What is var A? Var A is A, right? So you notice at this point in time, this stuff we're doing is, is the same thing really. So if we are to load this and just execute it, and I enter a number that falls within the threshold we're interested in, in this case, like 83%, it's an A. Right, so I guess you, you now, you understand what's going on here. You come under the classification for a B plus, all you need is a threshold, you're gonna to go to B plus. What is this called? Oh, we don't have a label B plus, so we're gonna to go to B plus. But a B plus has a threshold of? Sixty nine, right? Do you understand what's going on here? You come down here and then you're gonna have a, a label called B plus. But this is have to be B plus because we have a B plus uh, text up there, right? Um, again, for B, it's the same stuff. Do you understand what's going on here? I'm just copy pasting. Uh, This is sad, our purpose in life is to write this code, assembly language code, wow. <laughs> and then C plus, what is the threshold for C plus? 49, is it? 59? It's 49, oh, for, we forgot a B. This, this B here, 59, and this is 49, C plus. Listen, I'm just gonna copy paste these things here so that we, we, we start talking about more important things instead of this, right? Um, classify C, C is, what is C? 44, right? What is D plus? D plus is uh, 39, right? What is D? Hmm? 40, thank you for saying zero. <coughs> hmm? Yeah, what are you, yeah. Because you're trying to capture everything between zero and 39. Yeah? Okay, uh, so the, the next thing we do here is just to make sure that we have the labels that we need so again, we come here and then we're gonna say, this is C plus, C plus. This is C, this is C. This is, oh, garbage. This is D plus. D plus, and then we have a D final, and D. <sighs> Guys, is this fine? Now if we're to just check to see if, uh, if it's working, we just run this, and I'll enter two. And this is the thing, I mean, so, so the, the thing that will teach you is, uh, you know how to to write uh, next year whoever's going to be teaching a programming course 
as this notion, whole notion of creating appropriate test cases. So in this case, what you'd, would, you'd have to do if you were writing this yourself is you come up with test, appropriate test cases that uh, take into account all the different things that you're working with. So numbers you want to test out for within the different ranges, including those around the boundaries. Because usually you, you tend to make logical errors when, when working with numbers on the boundaries. The thing that falls on the boundary of a C and a C plus, right? So testing it would, be, would, be, would, would have to take into account all those different things. You, there's, there's a process you follow really when creating test cases. But in this case, we just uh, check for a D plus and then maybe, oh, what is a 41? Don't know, right? D plus. Okay, guys, is this, hi. 